All right, guys, so today we're gonna go over this pelvis model with the pelvis floor muscles included in it, as well as some of the true pelvic organs. So here, obviously, we can see the bladder. As we can see, this is a female model, so this is the uterus with the fallopian tubes as well as the ovaries, and back here we have the rectum. So, important landmarks here, between the uterus and the bladder, we have the vesicouterine space or vesicouterine pouch within here. And then back here, we have the rectouterine pouch, also known as the pouch of Douglas, which is clinically important because some of the most severe ectopic pregnancies occur within this region. So I'm just gonna remove these organs and we're gonna continue on down to the floor of the pelvis. So this is called the pelvic diaphragm. Now the muscles of importance are here. We have the obturator internus muscle, which is overlapped by this group of muscles, which are called together the levator ani. Now separating these two, we have the tendinous arch, which is not exactly shown here, but this indentation represents the tendinous arch separating the, separating the levator ani from the obturator internus muscle. So the levator ani muscle is made up of three muscles. Here we have the puborectalis muscle, which if you were to attach the rectum, you would see it goes around the structure. We have here the pubo coccygeus muscle, as well as we have the iliococcygeus muscle. And these three muscles together make up the levator ani. Now back here, we have the coccygeus muscle proper, one of them shown red and one of them shown in white. It's just the model, they're both the same muscle. The coccygeus is also known as the ischiococcygeus muscle. Now the pelvic diaphragm, by definition, means the uh, levator ani, so these three muscles, plus the coccygeus muscle. These three muscles, the levator ani, plus the coccygeus, makes up the pelvic diaphragm. So now, if we were to tilt a little more, and if we see right here, this little space where on this model, the vagina and the urethra are to exit, this is known as the UG or urogenital diaphragm. Please note, the pelvic diaphragm and the urogenital diaphragm are two different structures. Now, moving to the posterior side, we have here two very important ligaments you should already be familiar with. We have the sacrospinous ligament, which attaches from the ischial spine to the sacrum, and then laying over top of it, we can see this big guy right here, the sacrotuberous ligament coming from the ischial tuberosity to the sacrum. Now, please note that the uh, sacrospinous ligament is what creates both the uh, greater and lesser sciatic foramen. Coming down to the inferior view, <coughs> I'll orient it this way. So coming down to this view, we can see that we have the, um, the base of this, which is, again, the um, pelvic diaphragm. Right here in the center, which anchors all of these muscles together, is called the perineal body. Now, uh, along the perineal body, we have structures such as the external anal sphincter muscles, as well as anchoring the anal sphincter muscle, we have the anococcygeal ligament. So alongside, also being anchored by the perineal body, we have here the uh, superficial transverse perineal muscles. And then here we have the ischiocavernosus muscles, as well as the bulbospongiosus muscles going around the labia majora. And then we have the vestibule of the vagina as well as the anus. Now together with these structures, these create two different triangles. We have <coughs> the urogenital triangle, 
which is made up along this imaginary line, as well as along the ischio-cavernosus muscles. And then we have the anal triangle, which goes across this imaginary line all the way down to the anococcygeal ligament, and then all the way back. And these are the basics of this pelvic model.